Hey, make me a host, damn it. I don't know if I'm ready to give you that kind of power, but here right. goes. Three, two, one, and we're recording audio in three, two, one. Gaming and BS episode 61. <laughs> Stop. Cut, 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 cut. That was way too loud. Not too, I'm not pausing this recording, man. I'm just not no, doing it. You don't, you don't I'm, not, I'm not doing nothing. I know. That's fine. <laughs> I, I just it I, <clears throat> everything's so goddamn loud on my side. All right. <laughs> A blooper reel. You witnessed it here first, folks. I can't hear you. You're too loud. Seriously? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. Three, two, one. Shh, shh. Everybody just quiet. Shh. Gaming and BS episode 61. <laughs> this fucking song will not start over again. All right, hold on. <laughs> uh, you can't see me, Kev? It's not... That's that's a good thing. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Let's try this shit again. All right. Yeah, I kicked my gain down. Um, my gain's down. I'm afraid Brett might be too loud, but that's all right. We'll figure something out. I can I can turn Brett down. He's. He oh. Knows. You're always turning me down, man. Sometimes you just need to kick him down. <laughs> All right. Hold on. Let me just test this. <laughs> Hold on. Nerds right, watching each it. other troubleshoot. Huh? Nerds watching troubleshooting in action. This is Call Center Madness. All right, ready? Three, two, one. Gaming and BS, episode 61. All right, welcome to Gaming and BS, a podcast about tabletop RPGs and other miscellaneous topics of geekery. I'm one of your hosts, Sean. And I'm Brett. Welcome, folks. Yeah. This is, yeah. This is our, we're back from Gamehole Con, and uh, I'm still tired because I didn't take today off because I was stupid. I should have done what Sean did and taken today off as well. Yeah, well, uh, some of us are just smarter and wiser than others. You're just older and you can't bounce like I can. No, it's not sure I can't bounce like this either. I'm dragging ass pretty bad. My moobs show well in this shirt. All right, let's talk about something else. You guys are welcome. Anyways, uh, so anybody that is new to the show, thanks for tuning in and subscribing. We may have some new listeners because we had some uh, new people approach us at Game Hole. Yeah, we did. We had some really cool folks that stopped by our table and said, so what's this all about? I gave them a spiel and they said, oh, I'll listen. They grabbed one of our bookmarks and off they went. I'm hoping maybe one or two percent of them might have actually checked us out versus those who went, oh, thank God I got away from those two. Right. <laughs> and they quickly right. sprinted because there were a few that sprinted uh, rather rapidly up the stairs after they talked to us. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, shall we go into announcements? Let's do the announcement, brother. Yeah, let's get into this, shall we? Uh, okay. So, yeah, I've got a couple I want to throw out there. So, obviously, game holes over, like we just said. And um, Roger Braslett, Kev Thulu, Jeff Rademacher. Yeah, boo for not being on anymore because it was a fucking lot of fun. Um, but we got some really good feedback from the BSers who were there like, hey, um, next time, let's. how can we make it a better, I guess, BS, BS community event, you know, where Sean and I can get some um, – run some run more games right sean ran one game i didn't run any i was hoping to get some ad hoc stuff in but i don't think sean and i we weren't really sure how we were going to do it so we got together 
um, after the show on Sunday, kind of before I packed up and had to head out to uh, uh, hang out with my kids and stuff. We said, you know, what what could we do better? Can we do more games? Should we do like a dinner or something for folks? We can come and invite people out. So we'll do so. We're going to be there next year, of course, and we'll do something a little bit more organized. So that way we've got some better organization around the BS for community. And I'm thinking, Sean, we should put a poll out on our Google Plus page and say who uh, and see if people would be willing to check the box that they showed up because I have a feeling a bunch of I know a number of listeners stopped by and I started making notes at one point and then I lost track and I only saw some people a few times and not, a, not other times. So what do you think about that? A little yeah, that post, may, that, post event yeah, sign in. That may be a good idea. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Sure. <clears throat> sure. Brett. <laughs> nice. Yeah, Sean, I'll anything. Do that. I'll, I'll do that. I'll, fine. I'll do it. Fine. Do you have any, uh, do you have any announcements or anything you want to throw out there? I do not have any that I can think of as I'm saying this. Okay. So obviously um, this is a regular show. We're not going to go details on game. Well, if you want more, check out our bonus BS stream. We've got our coverage in there. Got some interviews. I shouldn't say interviews. We got some uh, uh, recorded sessions with the gaming, with the dungeon bastard uh, and Chris Perkins. So kind of cool stuff. Check it out. Yeah. Yeah, check it out, man. Check it, check, check, check it out. Do we have any random encounter, or is this, or is this list here pretty sketchy? You know, I don't think I saw any emails. I didn't check the comments off the blog. Um, I, I don't know if we have any random encounter. I don't. I. Oh no, I don't think so. You don't I think so? <laughs> no, I. Okay. I put something that could be a random <laughs> encounter, but I put it at the end of the show. <clears throat> okay, so. So we I go think, into topic of discussion. I don't have any. I don't get to play with any buttons and music. I didn't do a topic of discussion. I didn't have time. Damn, boo. I can't. This yeah. is a boo yourself, brother. I will. I will. Do it. There we go. Um. So was yeah, the shortest but, random encounter we've had since episode one. <laughs> I eat nothing yet. So, so I'm sure folks have uh, thrown some cool stuff out there. So uh, we'll get we'll get to it eventually. Yes, that is true. We, topic uh, of discussion or wait well, i'm sorry <laughs> we are so out of sync dude oh, we're normally shit. much tighter than this much I'm much game, tighter i'm game hold over game hold over <laughs> <laughs> uh no i didn't do it i didn't i mean this would be a tough one to kind of do an intro to and i i just i had a lot of time today but i had other things to do brett so why don't you just introduce the topic Oh, discussion. Sure. What I wanted to talk about today was after being at a convention and talking to different people about the games they're playing and looking on at the different groups and what they're doing, talking to my buddies uh, from my gaming group who are running around playing different stuff. And I thought, you know, one of the things that I've done, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of lately is the dark and gritty. Um, uh, ton, t lots of touches in the horror genre, you know, the dead babies thing. Um, plenty of that. Plenty of, um, we talked about money, talked about the silver standard, how I like this more realistic, gritty type of uh, grab you by the spine and shake you type of thing. And I started thinking about, I'm like, oh, this is cool. I saw Ed Greenwood at the con. I'm like, damn, that's pretty cool. He made it. And I kept thinking of the heroic settings of um, <coughs> uh, of some of the games that are out there and touring through the little um I shouldn't say little, but through the dealer hall and looking at the different games. And my my nostalgia button was just getting wailed on from the, hey, remember when you used to play Paladins all the time, Brett? Remember when it was really cool to be heroes and not always have to be dark and gritty, you know, Batman heroes, that type of thing. And I wanted to talk about the types of um, that um, trope or that genre or that feel, if you will, and uh, see what we're – See what we think about that a little bit. So, Sean, when you run, you are running right now a fantasy game, or even when you run an espionage game or um, or Savage Worlds or anything, do you tend towards the what would be kind of the 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 dark and gritty, or do you try to go towards the more heroic end of things? And maybe we might need to work on that definition a bit as we go here. But what's uh, how would you define your games in one of those two camps? Would you lean towards one more than another? Well, I do tend to keep the lights down when I run, and so it makes it dark. That's true. But, but I don't, I don't stand on my chair 
in wielding a sword, so it's not overly heroic. Um, <laughs> you're of, you're of no help. <laughs> so let me. I'll, okay, I'll tell you what I've been doing. So I tend to make my worlds a lot in the dark and gritty aspect of it. Part of it is the the world of darkness stuff I ran for so long. Warhammer, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Warhammer, um, fantasy role playing that environment. It's a dark and grim world of perilous adventure, and. Even when I, I grab a world like Greyhawk or Forgotten Realms or something along those lines, I tend to um, I, I tend to gritty it up a little bit. And you d very rarely do you run into some place and people are happy and we're here to save the happy villagers. Oh, they're such good villagers. There's usually some nasty undercurrent of something in the village. That you're like, oh yeah, I knew she was a traitor. Ah, this person sacrifices this whatever it is. Oh, here's a here's a you know hidden cult of some nasty whatever the case is. Um, I don't tend to go for the, hey guys, let's make sure our characters are all, all are, for lack of a better phrase, you know, good aligned, if you will. And we're going to do heroic deeds. It'll be good fighting evil. Um, we always have kind of an undercurrent of the dark and the gritty, kind of a noirish type of feel, if you will. And as Kevin says on the side, I don't really use alignment, but uh, <laughs> different topic for another day. But my point is, is that I I think I start to look at some of the heroic stuff as, you know, good fighting evil and, hey, we're a bunch of good adventurers here to drive the Dark Elves out. Um, kind of that very black and white. Maybe it is an alignment discussion, but it, it feels overly simple or childish to me. And uh, childish is a horrible phrase because there's probably somebody out there who likes it and I just totally insulted them. But it seems simple. And I think for some reason in my head, the dark and gritty stuff, feels more um, advanced or adult, or it feels like it's something that um, that's more challenging. Um, Sean, what do you think of that stuff? Come on now. Wake up with me. Um, Dead air is bad for radio. Just saying that. <laughs> yeah, indeed. I think that I don't tend to run a gritty, a gritty campaign, uh, dark doom, doomly gritty. Uh, I, I kind of did this weekend, but, it's usually not my, it's not my thing. It's not my forte, Brett, but maybe I need to expand upon that. Maybe I need to do more with that. Uh, I don't think, see, I, you probably come from that because you kind of like that. And I'm speaking for you because that's what I do. I, I would expect nothing less. Keep going. Excellent. So I think you know, you've played lots of World of Darkness. Yes. Vampire and all those games and in vampire movies and horror movies, I don't care for them that much. Okay. Uh, I've, never, I've never been a big fan. You know, I like like some of the ones like The Exorcist and stuff like that, but um it's not uh, it's not you know, if a movie comes out, it's not one of the one of those are not ones I would go and see. Or I wouldn't I don't read horror books. For whatever reason, you know, Stephen King, I don't think I've read one of his books. Uh, I know. OK. All right. Fine. You know, easy. Everybody <laughs> just calm, calm the F down. All right. I mean, well, even but, even when I run. Uh, oh, sorry. Keep going. I'm stepping on. I was go, just going to say. So I think that for me, it's just not something that I have inherently embraced for whatever reason. It's just my personal preference. I don't <clears> think there's anything wrong with it. I don't have an adversity to it. It's just not something that is. I don't know that I've explored. Okay. And I think one of the things that um, looking in the, as people talk in the chat there, I think the heroic um, nomenclature is probably not the right one. I honestly couldn't think of a better offset to dark and gritty because bright and sunny just felt silly. Um, well, man, let's get, <laughs> uh, come on now. Let's be, uh, I'm not talking about rainbows and unicorn farts. No, I know. I'm, I'm not, not talking about that either, but pony. no, but I mean, when we're playing like in your five E game, there's, you know, people are being terrorized by bandits. So we're going to go stop that. We're going to go to the, um, go deal with the bandits. We're going to take care of that problem. There, there seems like there's a lost temple we could find, you know, help some people out. We're doing good deeds for good people. <clears throat> we have, my character so, may have a kind of a, so my character, my character so, may have so, a, so it should be. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> my character has a, um, an edgy background, if you will, that he committed crimes and, and so forth. Um, but I think the, the upbeat, let's perhaps upbeat is a better way to go, but there's something, um, 
really cool about doing really good deeds and helping out good people. And it's not like, I don't know, it's not like golden age or silver age comics where, you know, you've got this epitome of a Superman um, or literally Superman doing things. Um, but I think sometimes the, the dark and the gritty, the, the, uh, Oh, Victor, Victor calls us out, Indiana Jones, right? I mean, he's a good person doing good things. He may have some, you know, some background problems with um, different other characters, NPCs, if you will. But he's a good guy doing good things, having great adventures. Some of the things may be a little darkish in that he's dealing with some nasty things. But it's not really, every time he underturns, overturns a rock and looks underneath, I mean, <clears throat> the Nazis are bad. This guy's bad. This woman's bad. He doesn't have to go and say, "Oh my God, this is actually." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but he doesn't flip. He doesn't flip over the the next piece of adventure. Oh, look! It's actually a cult of Cthulhu, and they've slaughtered another bunch of babies. Oh, great for me! And I think that type of darkness, after a while, it's kind of like we talked about on the, on the horror episode. Is that if you overdo it, and I, I'm <clears throat> so maybe this is breast confession time. Maybe I've been overdoing it a little bit, and it's feeling like um, I need to step away from that further. Because it just get it's getting to the point when where it's becoming uh, you can easily guess where it's going. You're like, oh, it's gonna be dark and gritty. So I'm gonna open the door, walk in, and everyone in this tavern is a hidden cultist, or half of them are hidden cultists. Somewhere in the basement of this bar has to be a sewer grate that opens the sewer, and there's some fucking nasty, you know, rat monsters or something down there. Always has to be rat monsters. Someone's uh, you know, along those lines. And I think that if overdone it's losing its edge, at least for me as a game master. I'm starting to feel like I've lost a bit of that edge when it comes to that setting. Dude. Hey, man, we all lose our edge a little bit, but you just get back and sharpen that fucker. <laughs> and, and sharp, and then you're, you're good to go. Okay. I do easy. agree, but I do think I had a, a DM. Um, I don't know if he even listens to the show. I've known him for 30 years. And, uh, we, I brought this up on different shows where he tends to seem to take the same approach with a lot of his adventures. He is more of an antagonistic GM. He wants to create quandaries for us, which is fine. And, and that's part of GMing, but he tries to really, you know, my buddy Jeff usually will play a paladin and he needs the GM will need to create a moral quandary for him. So how what so what type of moral quandary does it go? So this is where some of the um <clears throat> the like, the dark and gritty comes in, right? A moral well, quandary could be do you save do you save the halflings or or do you save the the orc tribe that has just converted to Foltus? You know, that's a type of a what I would consider a lighter hearted or more heroic type of moral quandary versus do you save the halflings by murdering your sister? Because that's the only way to go. I mean that is clunk, that's the darker f twist or flip. Well, Sorry. it'd be like him playing a Jedi and somebody from the dark side and he can't turn him or in, or I'm going to grab a prisoner to get information. The prisoner takes it, you know, just doesn't give him anything and tells him to screw off. And, you know, he wants to backhand him. And I'm like, well, uh, 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 well hold on a second now, Mr. Lawful Good. Um, you know, you should take him to trial, you know, just it's such a, it's a funny, so we talk about tropes and gaming and tropes and this and tropes and that in, an, in our own, in this game group that I've been a part of for a long, long, long time, we all take on certain roles and it's always predictable. Like if my buddy Joe's listening into this, he's like, uh, Oh, I know that's so right. And, um, he was at the game hole con, my buddy Joe, but anyways, love you brother. Anyways, he knows what I'm talking about. My buddy Dustin will GM. And he's always going to try to flick my buddy Jeff's ear, who is always the do-gooder or paladin. Or he'll try to play, you know, kind of a fringy character, like has kind of a dark side, but really he's trying to do good. You know, he's got this inner turmoil bullshit going on. <laughs> inner turmoil so bullshit. It, but the thing is, is, when you do that for 30 years, you, you're you right. You lose that edge. Your players are like, oh, it's oh, it's this scenario coming up uh, yet again. What a shock. So I think what happens with, and that's just not a good, it's not a bad thing. It's not a good thing. It's just what it is. I think we're creatures of habit. Mm -hmm. We do certain things. And it's sometimes, I mean, even with um, this weekend when I was playing Weird Wars, you know, I had to get in and start making things creepy. 
And I did. So I pulled out the I, an homage to Brett and in, inserted inserted a a dead baby. Uh, cause that's what you do. So proud of you, man. Thanks, Brett. Hey. Oh, well, I'll do you, buddy. <laughs> um, but it, that's not something I would typically do. And and frankly, with a game con, I don't know how that was going to go over. Because I had uh, a young lady uh, in in there. I, I say young lady. She was probably, I mean, she could have been anywhere between 18 and you know 24, probably. And I say that because she's going into the military. So I know she was at least 18. And then uh, some some guys. And... I didn't know if somebody would would freak out if I said, you know, you go over to the crib and you find the uh, body of a deceased infant. You know, well, th- there's a difference between having the <clears throat> having the the baby's dead versus the dark visceral. The child is laying there, and then you get into the the slasher movie type depiction. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa! Time would X card the fuck out of that. I, that that could, that could be a bit much for some folks. Um, <clears throat> so. Is it, and this may just be because of my um, inundation, if you will, with that darker component of it, but looking at some of the more heroic of the lighter side, even your four colored supers or your uh, Teen Titans instead of Batman type of thing, as Victor talks about in the chat over here, when you do that, something in me, and I think this might just, it may, maybe it's a Brett problem, but does that feel... Um, how do I, less real to you, Sean? Does that feel um, simple? I mean, may, maybe simple isn't the right word, but there's something about me that goes, ah, oh, my kids would like that. That's not that's not for me. I need something more complex. And perhaps there's, it's uh, I'm mistaking dark and gritty for complexity or depth of either character or plot or whatever the case is. Because I think I think the the example that the that came up in the chat here about Indiana Jones, he's a complex character. Now, granted, he's not <clears throat> as dark. There's only X number of movies, so we only only know so much about him from that canon. But the character has a lot of different facets or components of him. But sometimes, you know, maybe the simpler or the easier to grasp onto is better. Because I do have a hell of a good time playing those type of games when I run them for my kids. And I wonder sometimes if I try to amp it up and whatever that means when I grab on to uh, when I'm going to run for for adults, when we run for my friends, I feel like, no, that would never fly with those guys because that's too much for the kids or somebody, somebody else. The, what do you think about that? Sean? And this, like I said, this is, you know, just talking about this out loud. I don't know. It, it might- well, I, I think that you, you have to GM kids and adults pretty different. It doesn't mean you have to, dumb it down for kids and you don't have to amp it up for adults. It's just how you, I mean, some of the topics that you would include in a, an RPG, you're not going to include with kids that you might include with adults. There's just maturity issues around it. And I think that's, maybe maybe that's why my kids are, that's maybe that's why my kids are all fucked up. No, I'm kidding. I don't, I don't, I'm kidding. That's why they're all in therapy. That's why they're all in (laughs) therapy. therapy, Yes. Yes. Right. right. I do do not do that. And good for you. (laughs) Good for me. For and putting him into therapy. <clears throat> Not really. Anyways, um, so that aside. Okay. Whoop. Pushed over. Shove. Pushed slide. Over. Uh, I don't think it has to be complex to be dark and gritty. I mean, you might want to, if you're talking dark and gritty when it comes to morality, that might be something that is a little bit different. But... Uh, because there may be, I think if you watch some dark and gritty movies or read some books, there may be some, there may be complexity with the character. Like there's the Batman where, I don't know why I'm bringing up Batman, but it, he always seems dark. Well, I mean, he, every he's that, he's that su- no sun in it and all. Well, it's know, like the, pun- it's like see. if you pick another superhero, that's a darker superhero, you take the Punisher. Punisher does good things. He murders the fuck out of people. I mean, that's just what he does. You know, I'm sorry. Bang. Shoots you in the fucking head. I mean, that's the Punisher. That's, this is what he does. Totally not, that's totally not right. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> I, so well, what about Daredevil? He just beats people to death. See, I'm <laughs> no, an, I don't know comics very well. <clears throat> I, I'm not a big comic guy. I just know kind of high level. Yeah. Pop. So <clears throat> I, the other component of this, it's do, 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 do. So, 
I think now just talking about it out loud, because that's what we do on this podcast. Because uh, if we talked about it in our heads, it'd be boring as shit. So anyway, I think it may come down to the conversation with the group saying, hey, guys, <clears throat> excuse me, I'd like to do something like um, the – uh, the Ghostbusters game that some of the guys played, or I'd like to do something like this, excuse me, lighter hearted or, or, or something along those lines. But I think maybe it comes down to a discussion with some of the crew that, you know, is that something you guys would get into? Because I'm one, I'm wondering if, you know, am I perhaps taking something, and this is just obviously Brett's confessional here. Uh, I apologize folks. But is is this, am I making an assumption with the group that it would be better verified with them as opposed to just making the assumption? You know what I mean? Saying, oh, no, 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 the guys wouldn't like that. The, the, the group wouldn't like that. They like this type of game. And perhaps well, you, they, they just like it because that's all I've been fucking feeding them for years. Do you, yeah, how do you know? <clears throat> I mean, you'd you like ask. to say, I know my players, but you'd be surprised, I think, at the fact that some would be open to other things or maybe they get just tired of the same shit and that they would just take whatever you give them. That is a different, a difference and a change and eat it up and just go, Oh, I like this because it's fresh and different rather than, Oh, it's gritty, but it's a different gritty. Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, it's another but noir think- setting, but it's sci-fi instead of fantasy. Yay for more noir. Ray. Yeah. Well, so we have not, I mean, have we clearly defined what is dark and gritty versus heroic? No, we've not. I, I, I figured we'd start, like, I think we'd start talking here and then eventually get to this point. So Sean, yeah. when I say dark and gritty, what does it mean to you? I think no sunshine and sandpaper. <sighs> no. But in it's, addition to that, <laughs> okay, as it you. relates to role-playing games, Oh, thank you. I didn't know I had to qualify because we're on a role-playing podcast, you son of a bitch. As it relates to role playing games, I think it has to do with uh, the moral quandaries. It could have something that may be wrong, but it's in the purpose of writing something. So it's kind of like the I'm gonna kill. I'm gonna kill bad dudes. It's like a vigilante system, right? Or vigil vigilanteism. So it's I'm gonna go out. And I'm going to take justice into my own hands. I'm not going to put them on trial. I'm just going to kill them because I know they're bad. But then somebody might say, well, wait a minute. I don't know if they're necessarily bad. What if they, you know, so then you started getting into this philosophical difference. And I don't know if that's right or wrong in RPGs and how you want to deal with that. But, you know, maybe th- lines get blurred. Maybe uh, it's, it's grayed between the good and the bad. You know, if you want to get into the grittiness, Maybe it's the real, the real, not reality. Uh, maybe it's the graphic piece of your game. So maybe you're describing things that are bloody, murderous. You know, eyes popping out of skulls. Blah blah blah. So it's the it's the descriptive attitude almost of the thing. I think so, that's an element. I think that's an element. I don't think it's the be all end all. But I no, think but it's it's a very good point though because what you did with the dead baby in the crib for your game was at a plane or level, for lack of a better phrase, that wouldn't be overly offensive. Had I done it with <clears throat> my darker, grittier perspective, there would have been, you know, a lot worse. The descriptions would have been more intense. And that intensity, perhaps, is not necessary because you still get the the feeling there, just like I would give to my kids if I was running a game for them. Um, and again, it's not like it's a, a, a cheesy or simple plot. They would say, I look in the house. All everyone's dead. Even the kids, yes. Even the children are dead. Even the baby. These orcs slaughtered everybody. Wow. They. That's all they need to hear. They don't need to hear the way, the format, and the grotesqueness. And perhaps that's oversimplifying what we're getting at. But the attitude around all the narrative, because you set the stage and the tone of the entire thing through you as game master through the narrative and as players as they narrate what they're doing. But you help to drive that narrative tone, and that can turn it from dark and gritty into something a little lighter and easier to work with. And that's a good point that you brought up. I think it is really a lot of the descriptors of it, because I think when you, you, so you, so one example that kind of you touched on, which I really liked, I really liked what you touched on, Brett. I like that. It's recorded forever. Well, at least as the internet goes, I guess, (laughs) but what, um, 
if you were to take a, an adventure, an encounter, or whatever that is, a scenario, a situation in a role playing game, and you were GMing a group of adults, and you were GMing a group of children, and you had the same one that you wanted to, con- to convey to either one. Let's say it's bad, right? It's a bad thing. Maybe they enter a room. There's something dead in there. What, what had ever, right? Maybe what, whatever the situation is. And then what happens when you describe it to the children and then you describe it to the adults? What is the difference? So, and it doesn't have to be different, right? They could be exactly the same, especially if you're playing. It's kind of like playing up, right? You, you're a martial artist, Brett. So Absolutely. when you're at a certain when you're a certain belt, you you play down, you spar down, you don't spar up. Right? Yeah, because so, what, what's the point of being a shit of a twelve year old kid, right? That doesn't do much for him. So for those that aren't makes, familiar, makes with me you, feel good sometimes, but the right. parents get mad. So if you're not a martial artist, <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, uh, what what I'm talking about is if you have say a black belt and say you have a yellow belt, the black belt spars down to the rules of the yellow belt, so they are much easier on the lower ranking person. So when I'm talking about role-playing games in this particular situation, you as a GM would talk down to not talk down. That's a bad example, but you would play to the level of the kids um, because the, the adults you would think would accept that and, and be able to handle whatever that, that is, but you would never story up with the kids. Right. You wouldn't, yes. you wouldn't story. And, right. So that's kind of the, the grittiness piece of that. And maybe we're getting into like really nuance about how we approach two different groups. No, I think but, this is it, this is a good piece, though, because like if you um, you read The Hobbit and if you watch any of what many people consider the the horrendous um, Hobbit movies that have recently recently come out by Steve Jackson or Steve Jackson, Peter Jackson, good grief. Um, <clears throat> by Peter Jackson. <laughs> slip he took from this weekend. <laughs> a total slip from this weekend. Um he took the attitude and the description, the the visual cues, in the um, in the uh, in the movies, and darkened it greatly. It's almost if you watch the newer Hobbit movies with a lens of this is how you tell the Hobbit if it was the Warhammer fantasy world, as a better lens to it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, if you look at it, if you look at um, those those books or some of the um, even Father and Grey Mauser and some of the, the classic fantasy, if you will, where a lot of us who cut our teeth on other books and when we first started playing, the description in those are not gory, disgusting, or what they don't evoke a dark environment other than it's misty, it's cloudy, it's dim. This is a place of thieves. <clears throat> and you may find someone who was burned to death, but there's not a lot there's not a lot of visceral insanity that goes with that feeling of it. You know, you, they may, you know, stick four feet of cold steel through somebody's left eye, but that's the extent of the description. And I think that because this medium, this art form that we all love and share is all verbal and we're trying to paint as vivid and wonderful of a picture as we can as game masters and players in our descriptions that if we want to ensure that the, look, let's, let's not waste our time. If you will, the, um, we or we, we don't need to be so as Victor points out here, we don't need to be quite so blatant and we don't need to be so you do realize had you done this, that or the other thing, you, you would have lost two fingers. They would have been torn from your hand. It could be look, you, you could have easily lost a finger. Those two things, you, you know, one's just longer or whatever, kind of more of a I don't want to do this. But anyway, th- there's a couple ways to to uh, get the same feeling across. You can do it quick. Um, you don't have to be so guttural, visceral, violent about it. Um, and by doing that, I think you help to set the tone because if I were to do this, so if I were to go back and run a D and D game with my group and I start the tone if with those type of description, if they let me, yeah, they they'll probably, you. after they listen to this, I'll be like, fuck that guy, I hate him, I'm sick of his dark worlds. So if you change it up and you do that, then you, it starts with the descriptions. It's a very narrative thing. I do this, what happens? When the players go into a descriptive piece, say, great, that, you know, just work with it. I hit him in the head with my warhammer. Pow, you hit him. He goes down. You smacked him good. I don't have to get into the pow, I popped his eyeball out or the brains goo goo out his ear. Now, granted, it can be kind of fun to have those descriptions, those critical hit charts. 
but it, it can be done. It, it totally can be done. I'm not sure necessarily. I, this is one of those things I'd have to talk to. So I think going back to my earlier point, I think, Sean, there'll be one of those pieces where we've talked about this before, you know, communicate, 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 say to the group, hey, I'd like to run a game that doesn't have quite the dark and gritty feel. <sighs> what would you guys like to do? Are you interested in that? Can we do that? Would you like to do it for a longer term type of game? Or would you like to just run a one shot of that? Maybe kind of a palate cleanser, if you will, in between larger um, dark stories that we tend to tell. We do enjoy them, but we'd like a palate cleanser perhaps in between. And on something like uh, Savage World Ghostbusters or Fate Ghostbusters or something like that, that would just be kind of, it would be fun, but a little kookier and just kind of lighten the mood. Well, and I think that if you mention Ghostbusters, people are going to take a lighter approach to it. Even though I've listened to some uh, actual plays that take it, there is a lightness to it, but they also act like it's, modern game where they would just be ghostbusters and and that's the world where ghosts and spirits are around and this franchise actually is around i don't often run into it um like i don't run uh, into it as often into that space but it, it's not to say somebody can't but it doesn't i agree if you say hey we're gonna run ghostbusters my first inkling is bill murray dan Aykroyd, and uh who's the third guy yeah, what the hell am I playing? Oh, uh, shit, I can't think of his name. Uh, <laughs> R- Ramis? Ramis. Harold Ramis. Harold Ramis, thank yeah, you. Egon yeah. Spangler, there we go. Yes, right. And so when I when I when when you think that, it's all going to be kind of... And, and frankly, some of those characters are not comedians, right? No, and then, I mean, and then as the guys are saying I mean, in the, the chat, right, are. sometimes your players do the, the weird thing. And you can start off with all the lightest intentions you want, and next thing you know, somebody has gone from... I let heard a game of Tune or Ghostbusters, and they've turned it into murder torture game. You're like, holy crap, what just happened? Um, so I think it's from the communication perspective is that if you start out, and it's kind of <laughs> kind of goes contrary to my bait and switch, our topic from before, but th- that's more of a special one offy thing versus this. Is we're like, look, this is the type of game we're going to play. Let's do our let's keep it. We want to keep it light and so on. It may very well be fine that the group's like, okay, we'll do that for a short period but I don't know if they want to do that long-term, then that's fine. But then again, you might get in there and say, you know what? That was a lot of freaking fun, man. I like, you know, doing, being simple, good people doing simple, good things. I like being this more heroic and I didn't like the rest of it. I think we could really have some fun with this. Let's do more. So it might be one of those things where for me personally, my group hasn't had that for a while and it might be kind of fun to explore it if nothing else and just see what happens with it. Yeah, somebody pointed out in the chat room, Ernie Hudson. Don't remember, don't forget Ernie. Oh, that's right. Damn, Ernie Hudson. He was fucking funny. <laughs> he had some quick little... Big ass Twinkie. Yeah, it's a big ass Twinkie. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that, so there's dark and gritty, and I think it's so. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's it's how you put put, put it out there. And, and the and other and the other piece, and uh, nobody panic over in the chat room is talking about this. We're step on Sean one more time, but the characters you you allow to be made or that you help coerce players into making <clears throat> when they get into it. Like, look, if we have 15 Wolverines and five Punishers and another dark brooding Batman, it's going to, you're going to have a hell of a time playing, you know, Ghostbusters, unless it's going to be dark Wolverine, Punisher, Batman, Ghostbusters. Not that you can't do that. That's a, that's a twist on that piece of it. But I think, um, it does start with, and this is where, as a game master, you're saying, look, this is the tone. When someone says, hey, here's my character, and they show you the character sheet, you say, ooh, this is kind of dark. Remember, we want to change it up and assist in flipping that character around a little bit, tweaking it some, and then reinforcing it through the verbal narrative. And uh, also then catch, making sure that what you're doing from your plot points and so forth, for me, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, it's going to require me to be more... Uh, I want to say it's more methodical or thoughtful in how I lay things out because my usual, when I improv, like I like to do, my mind goes to what's comfortable when you improv. So I'm going to go, boom, I'm going to jump back to the darker thing. And if you've got a room full of happy go lucky habits, they're going to be like, Whoa, what the hell just happened? You know, and you gotta, if it's new or it's something you haven't done for a while, you need to move back into it. So, and I, like I said, I mean, I said heroic at the, at the title of this. I don't think heroic is the right word. 
I yeah, think we never even touched on heroic. We're so talking the, so, about this Batman freaking dark gritty. That's shit. right where I'm headed to now. So it's not <clears throat> heroic. Isn't the right word. I had no better word for it at the time. Um, but the opposite of dark and gritty, there's got to be um, oh. Oh, angelic and lightful. No. And, and I think that might be a um, four color. I think is one, one of the guys in the chat room was saying, and that that's a good way to put it. There is, there's probably a number of rainbows and unicorns. Sean, probably not good. Um, <laughs> High adventure. Thank focus, you. Victor. Man, that's focus. a good one. Sorry. I've seen some, the guys in the chat are dropping some really cool stuff. High adventures, <laughs> high, high adventures, a good one. And even if you don't have a term that you want to use saying, look, I really like the Indiana Jones movies. We've been talking about that a little bit. Dun, 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 dun. So I'd like to do that. So let's do that. Or I want to, um, I want to do that type of thing. So let's well, keep it that? in that. Dude, define what is that? You're like, I want to do that. Well, what's <laughs> no, that? because like, if your group is seen. I, I, haven't saw, I haven't seen Indiana Jones. Okay. So do, 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 if I was going to pitch this to you, so the idea would be Indiana Jones, um, whatever the type of adventure is, it's going to be, you might be fighting against tremendous odds. Um, I, we're always heroes. We're always trying to do something and do something kind of cool. Um, there is, uh, th- there's complex stories involved. Uh, it could be pulpy, it, um, that type of thing. Um, but it doesn't have to be um, Sin City, Frank Miller. This is more a traditional type of thing. Sometimes it's almost easier to define something by saying what it's not than what it is when you're having trouble with it, as I clearly am. (laughs) Yeah. So you're saying, look, you know how I like to run a lot of noir stuff, kind of darker, grittier that? I want to go opposite of that. I'm thinking more Indiana Jones. And no one says, oh, Indiana Jones is very dark and gritty and brutal and blah, blah, blah. No one says that. I mean, there's some blood. We get one guy who gets chopped up. I'll by say a it. Prop. I'll say it right here. God damn it. Indiana Jones is dark and gritty and horrible. And uh, yeah, there. Yeah. When you come to the office tomorrow, I'll punch you. Wait, no, you're working remote. You lucky bastard. <laughs> uh, it's Tuesday. Uh, it is Wednesday. I don't know. I have to check my schedule. Actually, I think I have to go to work. These guys don't care. No, they don't care. Anyway. It, so I think in my, for my personal case, when I've run a certain type of feel for so long, it may be worth saying, look, it's going to not be this. And when people say, well, what is it going to be like? Then start saying things like, well, you know, <clears throat> the Indiana Jones type of adventures or um, the type of feel you get from, um, oh, Christ, I can't think of it. Like, like, a, um, like a Forgotten Realms novel or something along those lines. <sighs> I'm not sure. But anyway. I think you need to run something like Ghostbusters. That might be fun. Yeah, man. Take all those guys, hey, the greatest game group ever made that I got the <laughs> had the honor of meeting at You did. Bowl. Did you get their did you get their um did you get their autographs like as I told you you should? Holy shit, man. I mean, I've met the Dungeon Bastard, Chris Perkins, uh Jen Page. And you know what? You've now met. They don't they don't even come close no. to the guys that Brett games with. No fucking was, kidding. Like, holy shit. Like the, the, the people parted <clears throat> out of the way when they walked through the con. <laughs> <laughs> they're people, man, they're good people. But seriously, w- would those guys play Ghostbusters? I bet you they would. Oh, I know they would. Some of them did. I mean, they were at the con. They played fake Ghostbusters. Uh, well, they did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Zave blew up. Zave blew things up and uh, and worked it out faster than than uh, than Rob was expecting. But <clears throat> so, Sean. Now, on the flip side, if you were he to say, answer my question, what was your question? I'm sorry. I would say, uh, oh, pardon me. Would you grief. run? Ghostbusters? I'm sorry. Would, would I? Run, yeah, run Ghostbusters for your group. Would you know. run it for your group? That's the trick. See, would yeah. Brett be able to pull off Ghostbusters? Because he's got all these tattoos and dark T-shirts. And <laughs> he's like dead babies. I would freaking love to see Brett. <laughs> about the marshmallow the stay puff marshmallow marshmallow man. man i don't know dude. See, he would get the zooly 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 thing going See, on. i don't i don't know i don't know but when it comes into like he playing like the npc what's the the, the accounting guy's name that lives in dana barrett's yeah apartment i can't remember his name hello doggy yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, Brett, i don't know i actually don't know NPC. dude it, it has been it has been so long so now that's a very that type of game is more comedy to me. Rick Moranis was the character, by the, the actor, by the no, way. It's the actor. I'm looking for the character. Oh, sorry. But anyhow, I don't know if I could be that silly. 
or that much um, that that goofy with it. But Lewis Tully, thanks. Carl. Okay, I don't know. Lewis I don't know, Tully, dude. I don't know if I could do that. I think I'd have to ease myself into something. Yeah, I got these checks. That I'm different. on a new nutrition diet. It's really great. And there supplements. Hey, why don't you come on over from my place? So we got some things going on. We got a little twister, maybe spinning up. It'd be a really great time. Why don't you stop over? Yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll see. see. Red, I see role, role play that guy. Oh, I would freaking die. I don't somebody, know. Oh man, <laughs> it I might be. Somebody, it might be a good yeah. challenge. It might be a good challenge just to see if I could do it, and then have uh, have my group just you know beat the crap out of me. I, God, I you would suck love, at this. I would love, love, love uh, at our next con that we can get to or online, and we record an actual play. There's talks. Uh, I'll divulge a little bit of secret. There's talks of of us and misdirected Mark getting an online fake game going, but if if it, and those guys are the fake guys, so I would imagine they're going to run it. Probably well, we'll have to because I sure as fuck aren't running probably fake. Probably Chris Nizak, but I would die. I would. I'm going to write Chris and go, dude, you got to run it, but it's got to be something really like Ghostbusters, com not comedy, but Ghostbusters ish, and have Brett play, and I would just freaking die. <laughs> I just be and sitting there going, I want to stab Harvey someone Davis in the eye. How do I stab someone yeah. in the eye? You can't stab him in the eye. Um, how do I do? Like I would, I, you know, it'd be kind of cool is to get you in like a tune, a tune uh, RPG <laughs> session. That would be kind of hilarious. Yeah, I, don't <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I can. I don't know what I don't know what I can. From that. gaming and BS playing tune. I don't Who know. The what I would pay for that. I, I don't. Would, I don't know what I would do with that. I don't know what I would do with that. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> oh. Brett would like. <laughs> Brett would like. I, I might, fire, like I'm, I'm gonna flip play, the table. God damn I'm it! I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play death, and then we just all comedically hate on death. I think that would be hilarious. <laughs> oh, nice sickle! Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> hit him over the head with a hammer <laughs> and an anvil. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. I don't know what to do with that. Brett's off the rails now. Oh yeah, I'm gone. I don't know what I would do. All right, so mm. heroic, yeah, heroic. I so think, heroic. I think, oh, sorry, go keep going, go ahead, man. Go ahead, dude. Go no, I was gonna say, I think the, um, I think it comes down to what what is not comes down to, but I think a piece of this is what's valued in the narrative, and the characters, and the overall storyline itself, and the types of adventures. If the value comes from, I really want this Frank Miller Sin City thing. If that's where your value is, then that's what. Your, your, your everyone's gonna lean towards if your value is no i want this other type of thing then i really want more of um what you used to tune or ghostbusters no this is the value the, the the value here that we're gunning for is that then i think that that helps right setting the the setting the uh the tone the characters the type of adventure um the mood all of that stuff i don't know if i can do that i think i can right i think i can Primetime adventures, and then like have it be a sitcom, and it's Brett. Maybe he's the husband. He plays the husband. Oh man! Or the or or the the goofy like neighbor guy, or the goofy sidekick, the the comedic relief. Hmm. <laughs> but can Brett pull that shit off? <laughs> I don't. I don't know, man. Maybe maybe that's my maybe that's my gaming limitation. I just can't do. I don't know. We'll find out. Dude, you got to expand yourself, man. You're an actor. You can like, hey, I, I, you got reach, man. I trust you. Trust I me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hell yeah. So if I we, do, if I do about dumb shit, if I do that, that means that I get to bring you into one of my games, and you got to play yeah, with, and you got to play in my group. I can, I can handle Clyde Barker, man. Sure. All right. Whatever. Whatever. Pinhead. <laughs> whatever. Nice. Whatever. Exorcist. Whatever. Uh -oh. Babies. <laughs> yeah, because you, you just giggle I'm at it. That's the problem. You're not gonna, that's, the, that's the that's what you have to deal with. <laughs> I'm a fucking sociopath. Good luck with that. Uh, whatever. <laughs> American Psycho, baby. Nice. Yeah. Well, anyway. <sighs> Are we done with this one? Yeah. So if you have, uh, if you've taken on the dark and gritty, or the heroic and lightheartedness, what does that look like in the games that you've played or run? Email us at gamingnbs.com and let us know. And we'll write, read it on the air um, or tweet it out to, to Twitter drawers. But, yeah, we'd like to hear. And uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Sounds good. Sounds I, good, Brett? I think so. Let's do, I'm still stuck on the whole 
running tune. I don't know if I... <laughs> anyway, carry on. Go, go. Next bit. All right. So let's hey, should we talk about uh dice bags? Shall we? I think we could and should. Uh, yeah. I think I got one in there. Oh, I got one. I have one in front of me. Br- bring one up, uh Brett. So Brett's holding. Ladies and gentlemen, Brett is holding in his hands a dice bag from Grayed Out Productions. G R E Y E B O U T dot Etsy dot com is where you can find them. They're tough as nails. They got two draw strings. They hold a lot of dice. They can be custom made, custom printed, or they have their own in stock designs. And Michael Allhauser is the owner and proprietor, and he is a gamer. So go to that address that I just said. Use Gaming NBS as the promo code. Ten percent off. Stuff a freaking dice bag, especially because Christmas is right around Christmas or Hanukkah or any you know, holiday of your choice. This time holiday of year is the holiday season. season. That's right. Or birthday. And if you do want holiday dice bags, my advice is get a hold of Michael. Um, find him on Google plus <clears throat> and uh, whatever it is you got to do, because he may well be backlogged if you want stuff in time for your holiday of choice. So do your best, get a hold of him and give him some stuff. If you use gaming and BS, <clears throat> As your promo code, ten percent uh, off. off off your order. So thanks, Michael, for supporting the show. All right, let's get into dice roll, die die roll, die roll. The dice roll. No die roll. It should be dice it's, roll. It's die. It's two to four, dude. That's it. Move on. Well, what if we're flipping a coin? No, it's die. A single die. There's. there's Stop a- talking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Brett has uh, dose. I have trace. Yep. So Whoa, um, I'm sorry. I have I have four. I, I holy shit, you do I have four. Have, it goes on. Four. There's another page of these notes here. Brett, holy crap! Brett, Brett rarely outperforms <clears throat> me. That's true. <laughs> so, uh, in keeping with the uh, dark and gritty theme and Brett's inability to not uh, have something dead, um, workers discovered a 19th century burial vault in New York City. Usually when I see a headline like, oh, they found some vault with uh, long lost dead bodies piled up, whatever. I'm like, oh, they found something in Europe or something like that. No, this one's in New York City. So check it out. It's kind of interesting. If nothing else, this uh, if you don't mind or uh, go dark and gritty or you want to use it for some inspiration for modern day game or any other type of game, it could be fun. The um, other bit is there is a, wow, World of Warcraft. There's a movie coming. Kind of shocked me. Um, I am like, oh, I didn't know they were doing that because I don't keep up on uh, on video games that often. And I saw the trailer and I went, that doesn't look horrible. I probably will watch it for most likely not in a theater, but I, I'll probably watch it when it comes out at some point. I'll take a look at it. It's a fantasy wow. movie. It's like, wow. Yeah, yeah. So wow. Sh- wow. Sean. Wow. <laughs> Sean, wow. your turn. All right. Star Trek new TV series. If you're if you've been living under a rock or haven't been into in tune with some of the geek circles. Um, however, here's the big beef everybody has. It's on CBS Video On Demand, which requires a subscription, which is, I think, like eight bucks a month. And I saw a meme on this um, that I thought was quite hilarious. It was like a picture of some collector's room with a butt ton of like Star Trek stuff. It's like, it's got to be tens of thousands of dollars. And it's like, collects all this stuff won't pay eight bucks for a new cbs on <laughs> exactly you know, i paid two hundred dollars for this mint darth vader what right. eight dollars for a tv show <laughs> right anyways uh, the and, and i do know that darth vader is not star trek i know that i'm just picking on darth vader yes i i didn't put uh, i didn't put the link into this next one That's duracell okay. star wars now i would be surprised if anybody that listens to this has not seen this commercial that's now on youtube that's a fun damn commercial it dropped on the 29th of october which is about a little over a week ago and already has 5.6 million views um so if you google it it's going to come up i don't have the link in the show i'll put the link in the show notes but brett doesn't have it to copy over but it's really cool i mean if you're a kid that captures it all uh i thought and i thought it was really well done check it out number trace Galactic History or Galactic Folktale by Max Gladstone. Uh, now, me personally, I am not a big fan of fanfic. Uh, I typically don't read it. This is one that I actually did, and it was very well done. Um, it's basically Star Wars and talks about how the time has passed since uh, episodes. Oh, geez. I think it was the original four, five, and six, but just 
check it out and read it. And I'm sure, uh, yeah, it, Brad posted a link in the uh, chat. Uh, but I thought it was really well done. It talks about kind of the, uh, you know, was it real? Was it not real? It kind of goes into whether or not the the uh, events of episodes four, five, and six took place or were they really just kind of rumor, right? So when in a big galaxy, is it really true and written in the history books or, you know, did it happen like they say? I thought it was really well done. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. Well, number four. Now, Kickstarter. Brett and I kind of poo-poo Kickstarter. We're like, this is a great Kickstarter. It's a love-hate relationship for gamers, right? Yes. All you hear is you hear something like Brett bitching about John Wick fucking up a Kickstarter, and then you hear the Doom that came like study, and we piss about that. And then, oh, by the way, I, I bought I, I bought it on Blades in the Dark with John Harper because, look, hey, I got in on you know this other one. So right. it's a love-hate for gamers, but what's that? We pick and choose. We do. Right? It's like, oh, I think this is a great Kickstarter. <laughs> And then somebody else is probably like, "That's I wouldn't get on that. That's cool. But this one, uh, DCC, Dungeon Crawl Classics, if you ever want to get into the game, this is the time to do it. Um, they're reprinting. It's just, so They're not redoing the rules or anything. They're just doing a fourth printing. And the Kickstarter for 40 bucks will get you a huge-ass rule book, um, the core book, and seven adventures. Seven. Now, DCC adventures are light. I mean, you're talking... I don't even know what the page count, but they're good. I like them. The art is good. If you want a, a return to kind of um, the old school, may I say, OSR feel. Oh, it absolutely is Appendix, OSR, dude. And Appendix, Appendix N. N. Yes, Appendix N. But it does still have Ascending Armor Cat, uh, Armor Class, and all that other stuff. And has really, you know, it's a really good game, I think. Races or classes, you're a dwarf, you're an elf. You're not an Elven yep. fighter, whatever it is. And yes. uh, and as far as points out something out there in the chat room where it's it's they're short but loaded. Yep. So there's yeah, it's really awesome. But so if you and it has different covers you can get, and a lot of people that collect that stuff will want to get like all four covers or whatever it is. Um, but you don't have to do that. Just get in the Kickstarter and you get forty bucks. I mean the the rule book alone is like I think close to fifty. Just if you went to an FLGS and bought the rule book. So now you're going to get the rule book and four adventures, which typically go from anywhere, I think, like 10 bucks an adventure. Something um, like that. Yeah, I would definitely do it. They're a good group um, and good authors. Michael Curtis was at Game Hole. Doug Kovacs does a lot of their art. He was at Game Hole. They've been there two years in a row now. Um, good folks. So anyways, that's all I had for that role. Cool. Um other otherwise i um that's i think that's it did you have anything else Brett? no i just want to say you know the show brought to you by our other bsers we got joe swick kev thulu and jeff rademacher thank you gentlemen for stepping up there we had um <clears throat> we had a grunting frog gave us a review on itunes he said we had some really good discussions and fun banter definitely worth the time that was nice and uh as well as no good fant no good had said fantastic podcast for dms and players like boys delve into finer points role-playing games let how to approach that's both approachable and charming. Hey, someone thinks I'm charming. All right. He's, he called us a must listen for anyone who's ever rolled. And he says, cheers. So, Anthony, thank you so much for that, man. That was awesome. Yes. Thank you for listening. Thanks for subscribing. If you like what you hear, tell somebody. Um, if you want to comment or write in, we're on Twitter, Facebook. Just go to gamingandbs.com and you'll find us uh, where you can go and how to support us. I'm one of your hosts, Sean. All right, man. You want to stop the?